The flame of fire test is essentially this, whether you're spiritual or not. Sooner or later in life, you're going to be tested. And it's a metaphysical test. So like I say, whether you're consciously into metaphysics or couldn't care less about it is irrelevant. Sooner or later, every soul has to be tested. And it's a flame of fire test because it's um, very hot in there. And what I mean by hot is you'll be put into an experience, into a situation whereby you'll suddenly feel very angry or very agitated. And what can happen is you suddenly want to lash out at somebody or you'll be extra trigger reactive. Um, and people say to you, you know, what the heck's happened there? We didn't really say too much and you've you know, gone off the deep end. There is something else called the killing energy. And um, that's somebody else's term that I learned of years and years ago. And essentially what's happening is consciousness is rising, whether people are paying attention or not. When consciousness rises, what that means is everything in the unconscious now has to come forward into consciousness. There's a good reason for it. It comes forward to be healed. Now, how you manage this is really important. So at that moment of our real vulnerability and weakness, we might be physically on our knees, emotionally, psychologically on our knees, spiritually vulnerable. That is testing the salt and the metal of your soul. Don't fall into the trap of thinking this is a, an awful test that you can't pass because you actually can pass it. You have to create more faith over fear. And so two things are happening. Externally, you'll be presented with uh, people, situations that are going to fire you up. Now, listen to my terminology. And then your brain is going to get hot too. So the external environment being hot as well. In our world, it's getting hotter. And this means that heat is a byproduct of um, energy. And so um, when the brain cells are firing, um, our brain becomes hot. So it's important that you keep a cool head, a cool head literally, and a cool head emotionally. And the reason I've made this video is because, in fact, this is a, a really important video, because this is the very crucial moment where people get themselves in trouble or not. And it might be that you just are surrounded by um, situations that are provocative and making you want to engage with this dark energy. But I'm telling you, it's a test. And so you're to sit down and do nothing. Um, a great way to deal with this is firstly to, to have this knowledge. So it's not just you, is it? This is a global test. And at the moment, hundreds and thousands of people are going into this test, but they're going into it not having watched this video. And so this knowledge is going to help you. Dark energy comes into our wounds, which is why it's good to do self-healing. Because where you can be gotten uh, through your wounds and the things that annoy you, that is where you're vulnerable. So sometimes in class, I actually try and offend my students. And then I get them to a point of saying, is anybody not offended? And I get these frosty faces. And then I said, well, look, now I'm doing you a favor because I'm on your side. So I'm just showing you where you can be offended and manipulated and seduced because that is where dark energy comes into us. And that's when we then want to act on it. And so the test is to see it for the game that it is. And if you go right up to the flame and hold your own and keep your faith and do nothing, then eventually it cannot sustain. And so it dissipates and goes, goes to find another poor soul to pick on. But what I wanted to let you know, too, is most people don't realise that we have uh, natural impulses that run through us. So perhaps more of an angelic one, um, the love impulse, the life instinct. And then we have the darker one, which some people think is quite demonic, which is the, um, the death instinct. But actually, the matrix that we live in is a world of binary uh, polarity until you progress through to reformation of um, your thinking. So you have to do a couple of things here. Firstly, not act on it. 
Secondly, see it for what it is. Thirdly, find a way to sublimate that that is um, not engaging with other people in social. Or also, I'll just give you the heads up, don't internalise this either. So don't start to take this out on yourself because your internal saboteur is going to like that. So just sit there, just wait and, you know, do your praying and your meditating. Um, and then what you do is you wait for the intensities to subside. Now, what people then get upset about is that it can happen again. And I don't want you to be disappointed because I want you to just know that we are kept in the dark until we find our own light. And by that, I mean, is that eventually go round and round and round again, and it starts to look familiar. And this is my best tip for you to get over any psychological disorder is to get bored of it. And you get bored of it, uh, the more you see it and the more you think, oh, OK, hold on, this isn't me. This is just one of the tests in this collective uh, script that we have to process through. And so hopefully this video will help you out, guys. All right. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. Bye for now.